Okay, so it's a new day, and uh, we're back out here in the garage, me and my dog. And um, these doors have the factory latches on them, so I was able to latch them uh, on the car so they don't fall off. But to get them to line up is another story, because usually there's interior door cards and weather stripping. So what I did was I kind of lined them up the best I could, and then I drilled holes and put... Uh, carriage bolts through. Now, this does not keep it from wiggling or moving, but what it does do is put them in place so that I can weld them, and my welding skills aren't the best, but I can stick metal together. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to have to make some kind of bracket or brackets that hold this in place so that it can't move up, down, left, right, and out. And I'm going to have to do that to that one as well. Um, then, I believe the next step after that, and I'm just kind of talking out loud here, with you guys watching so that I can kind of figure it out for myself. But I believe after I get these mounted permanently, what I then need to do is take the hinge, which I have there, and I'm going to mount it up there, center it, and I'm gonna leave it overhanging because I'm gonna have some extra stuff. I have to cut off both sides. But once it's on there, I should also be able to kind of figure out the exact angle that I need to cut these doors. And I'm gonna leave a little bit overhanging because I'm gonna have plexiglass here uh, butting up against it. So that'll need to be all uh, weatherproofed. So if I cut it too short, then the plexiglass will just have nothing to go to. After that, I think I'm gonna to have to weld some kind of almost cage, if you will, some kind of bar going across here that sturdy everything up, almost like an A pillar but the A-pillar is also going to act as a way for the weather stripping on the main door to push up against it and seal everything. So that's the plan. Um, subject to change, but that's what I got going on right now. All right, so I got these little temporary brackets welded in place there going along on both sides and then I ran out of gas on the last one uh, right there so um, I have to go get more argon and then tomorrow I'm gonna go to uh, my local metal supply place I'm gonna get some more of this 2 by 2 stuff and I'm gonna go this is what I'm thinking up weld the door to it that way weld the door to it and then I'll make a piece that goes up and same thing over here, one up, one over, and then something that comes down. So that's the plan, I'm tired. I've been at this uh, all night trying to line up these doors that were warped and bowed and bent. It was uh, not easy to get the door gaps to be even everywhere, but it's the best I could do for now. And uh, I'm calling it a night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So I ran out of argon gas for the welder uh, last night, went today to go to the welding supply place and they were supposed to be open, but they weren't, they were closed. And uh, yeah, so today was kind of a waste for that project. So I decided to jump over here and start putting these parking lights in. Uh, Connecticut requires them, unfortunately. Um, I got some clear ones and some smoked ones. I actually like the smoked ones better, so those are going on. Uh, Connecticut requires that you have amber running lights on the side and reflectors. These do not count as reflectors, but I figure it kind of kills two birds with one stone. I already have these holes in these doors because they are NA2 doors. They come with uh, a cover that goes over here, and I don't have the OEM ones, but the guy who sold me these beat-up doors did have some weird aftermarket thing that goes on here, but it seemed like more work to put those on and paint them and do the body work to get them to fit properly. These doors don't fit too well as it is because they are bent. You can see down here, there's more side skirt showing the whole door is warped. But anyway, back on topic here, I figure I will cover these holes with these lights. So just to make things quicker, what I did was I already ran the wiring inside and tied them into my regular running lights. And now I am just kind of looping them through these holes so that all I have to do is snip them, connect them, and they'll all be run in series that way or parallel, whatever the word is. And because Connecticut requires a reflector, I will just, I got some red reflective tape and I'll just go over these holes. Um, there's only these two here, so 
maybe I'll do one strip, maybe I'll do little squares, I don't know. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna utilize these holes to screw in these with self-tappers or if I will just use 3M tape, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna use quick disconnects on everything because these are from Amazon, so I'm sure they're probably pretty crappy and will burn out, so I have some spares. And uh, with the quick disconnects, I won't have to cut and re-solder, so. That's what I'm doing for these on both sides, and I'll show you the end result. So I just stuck them in there. Uh, they're not mounted yet. And I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, I don't like amber, but it does make it look pretty trailery. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. All right, what's up, everybody? So I'm back in the garage again. I keep going back and forth on designs on this thing and changing it, and it's hard because once I cut, it's pretty much a final decision. Um, I mean, I know it's not entirely true. I could always weld and add more material, but I'd rather avoid that. So this is what I have decided uh, right now. What I'm going to do is originally I was going to cut the door up a little bit here, about six inches, and then go at this angle up to here. Now I think I'm just going to do an angle straight down to the... Uh, rockers here to the side skirts. I think that's going to make it a lot easier. I won't have to use aluminum brakes to bend aluminum. Um, there won't have to be as many exact measurements and there won't be two cuts on the doors. Uh, however, it does mean I have one shot at it and uh, I don't know. So we'll see how it turns out. But this was actually my original plan and I kind of went full circle and came back to this. Um, and it's how I made it on the remote control car in the video where I cut the NSX in half. Um, I'll put the video right above me here so you guys can link that and see that. But, uh, I think it actually looks the best. It's really hard to make a coupe look good, uh, when you cut it in half. Any car trailers you see, they're usually sedans or wagons, and they look great when they cut them in front of the rear doors. Um, this car, NSXs are beautiful, but once you start cutting them, they become, like, disproportionate, and it's just strange. But I think this is the best solution for this, so that's what I'm doing. Full circle, back to the original plan. I just wasted a lot of time thinking of alternate ideas, um, so I'm going to jump into it. So I got this Hurricane gear hinge here. It's pretty neat stuff, it's, you know, weatherproof for the most part. And uh, so far, this is how it works. It's just kind of two interlocking gears. Interesting design. I'm sure whoever invented this is a millionaire. Uh, it's meant for, like, commercial doors. It's not meant to go... Uh, horizontal like this they want to be vertical but all i did so far was throw a self tapper in the middle and i'm leaving it overhanging so then uh i can figure out the exact angle to go straight up to here and then i'll have to do a couple uh weird cuts to get it to tilt in one thing i have to keep in mind is i'm going to have windows here so not working but just lexan windows and they're gonna need they're gonna be able to butt up along here and i'll have to figure out something around this handle and i'll probably have them come right to the edge here so any water just goes right out uh but i'll also i'll also have to have something here for the window to uh be able to seal up against so i'm trying to keep that in mind so i left this hinge overhanging for now so that i can figure out this angle coming straight up to this it's a lot easier than trying to figure it out going in like that. And what I did was I just tied a string to it, left it hanging, uh, I just put a clamp on it to offer some weight, but it goes right around there. So that gives me my angle for the door on how I'm gonna cut it. So if you can imagine, it'll probably look something like that when I'm done. All right, so that Eddie's over there taping up that side where I'm gonna be cutting. We got it marked now with uh, the string and basically, what I did was I took a piece of metal the same thickness of that right there, which is going to be the front door. And it's taped in here with the string coming off of the back of it. And so that string is going to mark where the back of that front door is, the back of that aluminum. So I put these here, this big white piece of trim, because... Since the string is coming out here, it's hard to mark that line in there. So by touching this to both pieces of the string, we can then mark up top and then take tape. Okay, so I got this laser and uh, what I'm doing is I'm lining it up down there. You'll see it blink every once in a while, there it is. And I have it touching both of these strings. And uh, that makes me know that everything is perfectly straight and in line. 
And now it's time to cut this thing. We moved the trailer back so we could stop getting concussions from hitting the uh, car lift with our heads. We're ready to cut. I lied. Eddie's taping it up and then I'm cutting it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my uh, seven inch cutoff wheel. Uh, where I want my cut, I think, to end up is on the inside of this tape, but I'm going to cut on this side just to give myself a little extra room. I could always do a second cut later just so I don't mess it up or I can grind down whatever I have to. So I'm gonna take my seven inch cutoff wheel and just zip here. I don't think it'll make it through both the skin and the door skeleton, and then I'll have to do it to the other side. So one cut this side, on the other side of the door, same thing on that side. So the reason I cut these doors and why they were acceptable candidates to get cut in the first place is besides all the dents and dings over here and holes is that this whole door somehow I don't know the story but it was like crushed in here so what we've done is put a bar through there put tension on it with a ratchet strap and it was bent inside there so we hit that down with a hammer with a post on it and we've been prying right there and uh, just trying to straighten it out so that we can make this body line with the side skirts be flush. So you can see it's uh, about a quarter inch there and then it jumps to about a half inch right there. So we're trying to straighten that out. All right, done for tonight. And I left a few inches on each side here. And, uh, yeah, tomorrow's another day. And I'll start working some more on this thing. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, it's a new day, new evening. Anyway, I'm back out in the garage. And I'm trying to figure out exactly where to cut these. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking to cut this completely straight and parallel with that other door. So that when this door shuts on it, it's touching everything evenly at the same time. Um, and I only get one shot at this, and I had it marked here, but then when I took a piece of metal here and slid it across, touching that down there, I ended up right here. So this does not look straight to me. Um, <laughs> so I don't know where I went wrong. Um, luckily I haven't cut all the way and I left some extra room. So I gotta sit here and try to figure this out. All right, here goes. I only get one shot at this, uh, so I guess I can kind of just keep slicing off little bits until it's right, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm cutting it for the second time now, and I'm going to try to leave like a quarter inch as opposed to the two inches extra that I have now, and then I can fine tune it. <laughs> All right, so, Zach came by to do some welding here because I am not good at it. And his friend Ethan, he brought Ethan and uh, I cut these down. I just kept cutting little tiny slivers until uh, it was pretty good. So now we got a straight thing going all the way down and they're just gonna cap these off. It's very thin aluminum. I got it the same thickness as the body panels. So uh, I tend to burn through thin aluminum, aluminum. So that's why they're here. And they're gonna cap these off with some Nice pieces of metal. I'm gonna do some square tubing in here to stiffen up all this. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the game plan for now. And then from there, just kind of figuring it out as we go.
So there it is. And uh, originally when I was thinking this through, I was thinking I would have the door come over and I'd cut the same contours as these doors to get it on. But now I'm thinking that's kind of unnecessary. I could just have the door sitting there. It might not be as attractive on the front, but it'll save me some weight. And right now that's kind of one of my concerns. So, but these are on, that makes me happy. I'll have to do some uh, filler on here and grind all this down so it's smooth. Grind down the tacks and uh, paint them. Paint the doors, blend everything in. But there it is, so it's coming along. I'm pumped, light at the end of the tunnel and is in sight. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below, and stay tuned for more videos coming shortly. I try to release one every week. Thanks.